Welcome back. I invite you to sit in the front. It's always funnier to sit in the front and to ask the questions closer to the guys who, who are going to talk to you. The next, next topic will be apartmentum, state-of-the-art in smart buildings, an overview of the future of living and what it takes to create next-generation IoT solutions. If you listen to Patrick Burkhalter, CEO of Ergon Informatik, to Peter Schmidlin from Belimo Automation, and uh, first of all to Lars Hinrichs, he's the founder of Partimentum and the founder of Cinco Capital, a private equity fund investing in European and American tech companies. He founded the social network Xing in 2003 and brought it public. In 2010, he founded Hack Forward, a company that invested in the best German software developers. He's a young global leader at the World Economic Forum and member of the Young Presidents Organization. Since 2013, he has been a supervisory board member of Deutsche Telekom. His current project is Apartimentum, a house with smart home technology being built in Hamburg. Finally, something we can see, touch, and even walk around in. Please welcome Lars Hinrichs. Yeah, definitely um, a digital guy being now a real estate developer, and I can tell you, the, the real estate world is very, very analog. So let's make it somehow a bit um, refreshing. D disruption is basically everywhere. Everything what can be digitized will be digitized. Uh, this is a new thinking. A and everything is going to be exponential. Uh, we as humans, we can calculate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the computer does 1, 2, 4, 8, uh, 16, 32. And uh, as you all have heard, uh, AlphaGo uh, leads um, the, the Go game while it's 3 to 1. So I, it happened to be that um, I thought in asset allocation, let's buy some real estate, let's buy some bricks. And uh, what I haven't discovered back then was that nothing has changed in the, uh, in the real estate market. So let me share uh, you a story. So I, I bought this quite large real estate complex. And half a year later, I got um, a, letter, a letter, a very nice letter, from the uh, Hamburg uh, Monument Protection uh, apartment or uh, 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 direction and they said um, congratulations you have now a protected monument uh, you uh, if you want to change anything uh, please contact us so this is probably the worst thing which can happen um, followed by the second worst thing in real estate development which are neighbors neighbors is definitely the worst thing in the all and uh, once you have then uh, four years of thinking time how to get rid of the Monument Protection Act, how to get rid of the neighbors or at least find agreements or move someone out. Uh, I had four years uh, to think about uh, what can I do. And the idea was pretty simple that I want to reinvent um, the r residential rental market. So building smart apartments the theme of Apartimentum is basically living as a service. Uh, not software as a service, living as a service. Uh, so bringing internet thinking, bringing internet business models to the real estate world. And definitely, since I have some parts um, uh, in the base, uh, basement or ground floor, um, it's come up with new ideas uh, for the residential or for the commercial space. How does the residential model look like right now? Um, you have a, a certain numbers of square meters, you have the number of rooms, you have a fixed location, and you get a, a contract which has indefinite lengths. But this is not everything what you get. Sorry. Oh, one back. Um, what do you get? Uh, who's actually, just a question, uh, who's renting uh, a real estate um, apartment or 
right now? Who's, who's a rentee? And you? You're renting, you're buying, you're owning? Excellent. So, uh, at least those uh, who of you rent, uh, we, we know that we get something which is very empty, and we get uh, 14 different contracts for products uh, we might use. Uh, we get uh, contracts in terms of telephone, internet, TV, um, lift, uh, winter cleaning, um, water, electricity, everything together, and you get these either direct, and this costs you basically money and time, and the other thing uh, what you get is um, this kind of utility bill you get once a year where you are absolutely sure this is incorrect, but you can't change it, basically. So, I thought, let's make this a bit different. Let's build uh, something which comes more along uh, this kind of thinking of the shared economy. So we have cubic meters of living quality in the best location in town for a limited rental period, so not indefinite lengths. We have six months to four years, and this for a flat fee. It doesn't matter how much internet you use, how much water you uh, consume, how much electricity you need, everything is flat fee. And this is the internet thinking model and bringing this to, to real estate. But what else do you get? You get something which I call instant comfort. Everything is immediately ready. And this in a smart home environment where everything doesn't have an old standard, everything is internet IP based. And this is definitely the way to go. Um, just yesterday, I was at the Light and Building Conference uh, and Fair at uh, and Frankfurt. And everywhere at the fair, you, you read this uh, logo KNX. KNX is this kind of old uh, standard for, for housing, where you need actors and uh, activators and, and, and wires, etc. But I was some kind of uh, stubborn a bit uh, when I started this. I, I said, I don't want any of the old protocols in my house. Everything should be IP because IP is the way forward and nothing else. So once you, you enter this kind of thinking of IP and you, you think of internet models uh, and you think, uh, okay, we always get this kind of standard contract where you sign somewhere and you have to pay. Why not trying uh, new ways of paying with credit cards uh, for your rented product? Or how about, uh, what about discounts uh, if you maybe pay one year in advance? Definitely after last year's ECB or last week's ECB uh, um, decision uh, putting the interest rate at zero, uh, why not uh, use this kind of market dynamics and come up with ideas that you can, if you pay up front, like most internet models, you get discounts. So experimenting with real estate. I think the, 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 the concept of building smart um, uh, buildings is that you try to do everything different than everybody else has done, done before. So an ordinary building, you get, uh, enter it, it's empty, nothing is smart, and you don't even have internet connection. A smart building, smart building uses technology to, to make your life easier, to, to adopt to your life, um, and to, to, to use ideas, uh, which I'm going to show you now. First of all, the, the home, what you get is unconnected. The internet is not working, you have to call, and uh, there's nothing as, as um, like, uh, for, for the millennial generation, internet is as important as water and electricity. So renting now doesn't uh, basically come with an internet connection. And this is the first thing where I immediately said, let's put fiber in every room, let's put fiber to, immediately to the, uh, to the house itself, and put connectivity everywhere. 
then you, you think about like mm, I'm a Tesla driver. I'm a completely d addicted to, to everything what uh, technology has. And one one of the ideas I had is I want this Tesla feeling. When I get to my Tesla, the door opens itself. Uh, so I looked uh, around uh, and found many um, American companies like Argus, Quickset, KiwiKi, and others. Uh, telling me, let, let's build, uh, let's build a digital lock. <coughs> But the digital lock uh, just doesn't really solve the problem, especially if you took, uh, take American products. Everything is some kind of plastic. It's not really uh, constructed for German home, uh, German building doors, which are fat, which are protected, and where you have lots of engineering skills inside. So I came up with the idea, let's put everything what is next to the door, like the camera, the microphone, the speakers, even the ring bell. Can't we put this inside the door and get uh, um, a new set of uh, opportunities which you don't have with your normal door? So if someone rings at the apartmentum at, at the door, uh, there's nothing inside which rings, uh, but your telephone rings. So you can remotely open your door from everywhere in the world. And if you have like a cleaning service, uh, then you can give uh, out a, a special key from like five to nine to five past nine. So everything, w um, or the, the, uh, the invoicing comes a bit more transparent, uh, much more uh, correct and you can Uh, definitely send over uh, the key to someone uh, who's coming around and opens uh, the house without handing out a key. So these are ideas uh, we, for the first time ever, constructed in this kind of house. Um, as an uh, avid uh, electric car driver, I definitely wanted to have a charging station. And the more I looked into the, the system of charging stations, uh, it is absolutely clear that every existing uh, garage or uh, 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 parking uh, space won't be capable uh, for a high number of electric cars. Because the overall consumption of energy of an electric car is equal to one family home. So if you have uh, 32 spaces, and you, uh, this equals to 32 houses, including the 45 flats I'm building. So the, the voltage uh, amount I can uh, immediately take over was too high for the normal hammer grid. So this is why I get a Netzstation, like a uh, low or mid voltage uh, station from a Hamburg energy based in, uh, in my ground so that I can charge up to 32 cars parallel with 32 um, ampere. So this is by far the largest electronic parking garage in Germany. When it comes to lighting, uh, everything is LED light uh, and light is installed already in, in the buildings. So. You, in most uh, of the flats, you, you enter and you have some wires out of the, out of the ceiling. But uh, here you have a, a smart light concept, which helps you by waking up. Uh, it helps you because it knows what time it is, uh, how much light you actually put in. We have light sensors to adapt uh, the light uh, to the perfect, um, uh, to the perfect uh, color temperature inside. Um, inside uh, the flats and when it comes to uh, now the, the talk here um, I definitely wanted to, uh, to have uh, the Nest thermostat and the Nest products which is also uh, the Nest Protect inside uh, my smart home. Nest is definitely a fantastic company it looks fantastic. Tony Fidel who created <laughs> who created Nest, uh, invented the iPod with Steve Jobs, designed the first iPhones, and the user interface is just brilliant. So it is not available yet on the German market, uh, but uh, together with Belimo and Argon, uh, we found a solution to build Nest in a family home or multifamily home. 
and the user interface is just perfect. Connectivity, I, I spoke about it. And uh, usually if you get DSL, you get 10, maybe 25, maybe 50 megabits per second. <laughs> But if you build uh, the home of the future and provide free Wi-Fi everywhere, uh, free Wi-Fi not just uh, for the flats, also for the garage, so the cars are updating itself or every everybody who walks by gets beacon notifications, you definitely want a bigger pipe. So we, we connected the entire home with the 10 gigabit uh, fiber optics and surfing in this kind of environment really makes fun. <coughs> also with the bathroom, uh, there are some German companies around who we define and we work uh, the, uh, the bathroom, which becomes more like your micro spa. So with, uh, from remote you can actually uh, fill water into your bath tube, you can change uh, to a certain uh, parameters in your shower, so you get energizing shower or relaxing shower and uh, everything else. And there's this thinking that you need one major app for everything. And I'm the opposite guy. Um, I think that those apps which opens a door or connects a car or uh, measures how much uh, water you consume, they won't be compatible uh, today and they won't be compatible in the future. So I want individual apps. So if you enter Apartimentum, you definitely need a smartphone, no worries. Uh, there is a lot of Uh, iPads in the house or in the flats as well, but we are using MDM, Mobile Device Management. So you enter your house, you bring your own device, you install a profile file from Apple for, for, for uh, iOS, it sucks 14 apps out of the cloud pre-configured for your uh, living space. Uh, the commercial space uh, downstairs, um, I'm wanted to rent it out in the first place, but when I saw this kind of gigantic uh, hallway uh, we have, I said, we have to do something different. It's not a normal commercial space, so it's a, in the day it's a co-working space, it's also a place where you can, um, uh, where we have like 30 uh, co-working spaces, in the evening you have events, we had TEDx uh, Hamburg is um, being now there served. We have um, a diner round, so we have a, a daily concept with a bar for where you can have an apero in the evening, and we have um, um, a Michelin star restaurant which is opening next year uh, when the second uh, project is finished. So. Everything uh, with Apartimentum is definitely new. If you have questions in the end or want to know what is the smart home of the future looking like, um, I'm happy to ask, uh, answer your questions. But before I end uh, my talk, I would like to hand over to Peter Schmidlin from Bilimo, who made the next, uh, the next cooperation possible. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm from Belimo. We were the ones or are the ones who make, make um, a part of the technology or the, the infrastructure that is used in this building uh, possible. And I would like to start with a, with a, a short story. Um, 16 months ago, I looked it up, 16 months ago, Lars called us looking for a company that, that does something there in, on the, in, the, in the area of, of air conditioning, heating, heating and, 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 and fresh air. And um, two days later he visited us huh, in Zurich. And um, um, we were sitting there in our laboratory where we work on these our future topics. And, and we showed him there a prototype of, of the Nest thermostat working together with our actuators. And he just decided there that we go together. Huh? Uh, so now, 16 months later, um, for us as a company, 
being or our customers today are, are let's say more than 90% or 95% in this analog world still. Huh? And I would like to explain a little bit and give you some background what we have done, what we needed to do. And um, so th three companies, um, Apartimentum, Lars, then Ergon, you will, you will hear later on, uh, the company that does for us uh, the, the software, everything that works, that, ma that makes it happen. And uh, Belimo, we are really a focused company on HVAC, actuators and sensors, um, and um, on the air and the water side. So, yeah, di the digital world, the digital world from, from Lars is not a reality for f in, in the HVAC business today. Huh? Um, this picture here, this picture shows what has changed. So if you looked on the right side, on the right side of this picture, you see there that th these are not candles or, or lights, these are mobile devices. Um, but still today, in our business, this is not re real. So who of you can control the temperature at home with his mobile device? Nobody, yeah? Nobody. Everybody has a mobile device. So it's, it's far away from, from where you want to go. Um, so, I mean, th this thesis is, is obvious. We, we expect that we, that we will go in this, uh, uh, having digital, digital approaches in the HVAC industry as well. But the question is, what is the added value that we can generate? It's not only about, about setting a temperature in the room, it's about solving, solving real world um, problems. And um, so one, one topic that was uh, very clear for Lars when, when he came, um, that we not only want to control the temperature in the rooms, we as well want to control the, the fresh air. So what we do in the apartmentum is we control the quality of air. So it's about really quality of living um, in every single room. This is something it is not done today in residential homes. And I will, I will show you a slide later on that. So what do you see here? Orange stands for, these are our products, um, these, these are actuators and valves, and, and they, they control the amount of, of hot water that goes into the radiant floor heating. Um, this is basically a standard in, in commercial buildings, but this is not a standard today in, uh, in residential buildings. Um, and what, there is something very, very special on, on the left side, you see there, uh, if you look very close, there is an Ethernet cable, an Ethernet plug on the left side. So we bring Ethernet connectivity um, really to this to every single apartment yeah, for heating, heating and, 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 and air conditioning. So this device, this picture, and you will see a picture later on, is something that you would find in every single apartment. Um, so, where are the problems we can solve? What can be, what can be done better with, by using internet technology? And uh, today, if you, if you go to, to um, if you look what's going on in, in, the, in the apartment um, or HVAC industry, um, there is a lot of room for optimization. For example, energy or wiring or things that are not done perfectly, they do not work. Sometimes it's even a problem that you have warm enough apartments on one side of the building, on the other side of the building you don't have it. And then it gets very difficult to, to figure out the problem. And Internet of Things and having access to all these data in the cloud makes it kind of much easier. It all of a sudden gets very straightforward to solve problems. So. In our point of view, Internet of Things um, 
is like uh, is like uh, zooming in. It's like a stethoscope. It's like ultrasonic analy analysis or MRI uh, for a building because you cannot bring the building into the, to a doctor to analyze what's going on. Huh? But the technology, having all the information, very transparent, really helps to to analyze very fast what's going on and to optimize it. So then for us it was clear we want to focus, that is uh, that what, what Lars said already, it's really uh, it's about the occupant, the people who live in, live in the apartment, we want to focus on them, we want to, to do everything that is necessary for comfort and at the same time reduce cost because we reduce energy, energy or eliminate energy waste. Um, all the things you would expect um, from such a room. Yeah, here the. How, how do we do that? Huh? How do we do that? So we do not build bricks, <laughs> but what is necessary to make it to connect these in more intelligent devices? Um, it is it is uh, necessary that you have a very modular approach. I will show a slide later on. So very easy wiring, we have their bus wiring, we have uh, things realized like real plug and play connected together. We have something like self-addressing, even the functionality uh, gets automatically adopted. So you can add an, another apartment or another zone and it does it itself things that are not so used in the HVAC market today. Yeah? So I think it, ha it needs to be easy enough for all, all the players in the market. And what we see as well is this, uh, the cloud data, having all the data in the cloud, this will enable new services. And uh, we, we expect there are big, big changes. This is a device that we, that we introduced. It is a device that, that uh, really is, is needed to, to control the amount of air that goes to every single room. Uh, you see there on the left side, it, this, is a, this is an airflow sensor and it adjusts the amount of air so that really every single room can, the, the, the amount of air can be adjusted. means during the night when you sleep there, you need the fresh air there. And during the day, you need the, the air in the in, in, the, in your living room. And uh, with such devices, you, you, can, you, you can do that. Something that is not done today in the market. Eh? Yeah, the user interface, uh, Lars mentioned. <laughs> so basically there is the Nest thermostat and there is the, the, I, the iPad with several apps. You see here the app that that is uh, there to adjust the amount of air. So if you have a party, you have guests, you need more fresh air, you can adjust it easily, yeah? for example. Uh, and you can use your mobile phone as well. You can do it remotely. Yeah? So now a little bit more technology point of view. How is it done? So on the left side, you see the components there, for the, our components for the, for the heating and fresh air that are all connected to the cloud, direct and indirect, but it's all connected. All the data are, 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 are in the cloud, connected there. Is, you see the, the Spelimo cloud. And I think we will hear more technical, technical aspects later on. And the Nest thermostats, they, they connect themselves to the Nest thermostat. So what we have done here, we, we had to interconnect these two clouds. So it's a cloud to cloud operation. So if a, somebody changes there the temperature, the set point, this goes to the Nest cloud. The Nest cloud goes to this application cloud and this goes to, the, to our core cloud and then to the actuator. And uh, the standard question I always get when I show this slide is, mm, and what happens if the internet is down? So is the internet down or not? Or can it be down? So I think this is a, this is a question. We, we have there some solution that it would, it, would, it would run for a certain time. Maybe you cannot change the set point anymore. But we maintain temperature and quality and all these things 
independent uh, of, of the internet, but I, I believe uh, the internet infrastructure will be, or will be very stable. Um, and yeah, I mean, what you see here, we, we say it, it maybe it's very small, huh, but we have 26,000 data points connected. There's no commissioning needed. It's really kind of plug and play. It's very transparent. All the information of all um, for maintenance that maybe are important. It's all connected. It's up to 500 products. Um, it's, it is plug and play. Yeah? It is completely different what is done today. All the IP addressing and all these things just happen. And, and this was uh, for us, uh, it was a goal. And now the apartmentum is we are now testing it, and uh, so far it, it works as, 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 we, uh, as we thought and hoped. <laughs> so a few pictures from the apartmentum, really from what is, what is behind the scene. Normally you don't see that. Uh, this is infrastructure. Um, so all, all, the, all the apartments connected to the, to the cloud. And uh, yeah, maybe the final, the final uh, slide. Um, I think the focus is focus is comfort for us. It's really comfort. Put the put the people in in the center. Um, fresh air. I think fresh air is something very important today. That is not not done always. I think good enough. Energy. No more waste. Um, Make it efficient for planning, in installation, and commissioning. Maybe you are not so aware with these with these uh, problems today, and how much cost is related to that today. And self-diagnostic things you are used on in a car and maybe in a computer. It's not it's not the reality today in HVAC, but Internet of Things. Uh, I strongly believe uh, will will enhance uh, this business. Okay, thank you. So now Patrick can give you more insight. Uh, what is in the scene? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Entschuldigung. My name is Patrick Burkhalter. So in this project, in this apartmentum, Lars had the money, Peter had the ideas, and I had to implement it. So. We are the software company helping Belimo to put smart software into the devices. But the challenge we face, if you look at smart homes, is like when the people built the Tower of Babylon. There are a lot of protocols, a lot of things you need to know, a lot of companies. You have Apple with HomeKit. You have Cisco with their IoT kit. You have Bosch was just announced that it will make something with IoT and a lot of other companies. So what we need to do is to be able to talk to each other but being able to be prepared for the future. But we have one advantage. If you look how the computer developed during the last 10 years, it's the price went down and the performance went up. And today, I have in my pocket about the same power I had five years ago on my laptop. So that's quite a lot. And when we started to, with the project for Belimo to bring intelligence into those actuators, this was about eight years ago, we decided that we need to build a platform. A platform which abstracts the hardware level, the communication level, from the programming of control system. So what we build is software for Belimo where they can program control system for HVAC applications on a PC and then move that program to the actuator and then the model, the control system is running on an actuator which is also connected to the Ethernet. And in the end, they can use that system to make smart products or to develop very fast new products, new things. So, if we look at such a smart valve, you see on the left side the plug is the Ethernet plug, 
but there are also other cables. And inside, we have an embedded Linux system, and on the Linux system, we have embedded Java running, and the whole software is using OSGI, so you can plug in new components during runtime. The system itself can connect to other cables, other actuators connected to the amp, the bus, to backnet, to other buses, to sensors, and on the other hand, via the internet, IP, to the cloud, to other actuators using intelligence, to botnet over IP, to third-party APIs, for example, to an S-Cloud, and it has itself also a web server, so you can control the actuator with your phone or with the browser directly. But the heart is the control logic with which, which Belimo did design for apartmentum, for controlling the temperature in the room and the fresh air in the rooms. But it's not only one system. It's a distributed system. Here you can see where we test this, our software with the software of Belimo. You see about 30 to 40 intelligent actuators. On the right side, you see some actuators which are connected to other actuators. And the whole system must be plug and play. So in the house, the actuators are connected. You tell each actuator in which flat he is, and then the actuator finds itself out if he's connected to a heating or if he's connected to air control. He finds his own IP address, so you have to configure nothing. Because we think this is really important. Have you ever seen somebody trying to connect something when you're in a building, in a new building? Normally, it doesn't work. Normally, the people who are put the wires into a building, they are not able to configure a computer. That's not possible. So what we are missing in the building industry is people with some intelligence, or we have to try to put the intelligence into the actuators or into the software. So in the end, our goal was to reduce the complexity. We as Ergon reduced the complexity for Belimo, and Belimo reduced the complexity for the people living in the flats. The people in the flats, they just have an iPad or a Nest thermostat. They can say, I really want a little bit a higher temperature or a little bit colder, and the software itself down there does everything for them. So in the end, as I said, we have three partners, we have the money, we have the ideas, and we have to build it on software. If you have any questions, you can ask me afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's been very inspiring. Now, I bet you want to know things. I've got a nasty question, but I keep it for myself. Here's one of yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would not like to leave my, the temperature of my house or my food or my energy supply on internet. I wouldn't like to do that. We, have, we know that there are solar storms which can mix up the whole global in energy systems. We know that there can be in the future hostile states which have very probably already now very developed cyber warfare uh, systems available with, with how they can uh, how can uh, they can mix up the, th the whole world internet we just a few weeks ago we we read about russian submarines who have been snooping around the the, the underwater cables in in the seas here and there and and who knows how many states there are already in the world who can really shut down uh, internet if they want to but we have been living time of peace so far, and, and nobody had, didn't want to touch internet, except when, when the statue uh, argument in Estonia was uh, 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 the present, then the, the Russia, Russian uh, cyber criminals shut down Estonia internet, and nobody could do anything about it. So they kept it shut one week. 
So some life-preserving activities and so on put on internet, I don't think it's smart. And I think that after 50 years from now, nobody thinks it's smart. But now we are just uh, sleeping, uh, the dream of uh, sleeping beauty, and we think everything is fine and will co continue ever after, and we don't need to worry about uh, internet is eternal and untouched. I don't think so. Secondly, you talked about adjusting the temperature and, and so on in the home. I would not like to live in a home like that, that I need to be uh, chasing buttons all the time. I have heard about things like automatization, so that uh, I th I'm sure that now already we could equip the houses with, uh, with uh, technology which will detect how many people, where, what time of the day, if they are at home or if they're traveling, and adjust uh, the temperatures, the humidities and everything, and also rest temperatures according to the automatic limits which have been set before there. When you just hook up their, uh, uh, the, your laptop over there and you do it on cable and, and uh, so that you don't need to worry about ever after. You have done it once and it's good. Do you think this is smart? Well, uh, in the end, what you said is the control logic does, does exactly that. It does everything automatically. But my wife likes to have it a little bit warmer than me. So that's why she needs to press it up, because she wants to have it warmer. If there are more people in it, the system will heat less, because there, are more, there is more heat. They, they, they do that. Uh, the thing with the internet, I would also have prefer to be able to communicate with the Nest thermostat directly or just locally. At the moment, that's not possible. Nest doesn't open that interface, so we had to do it over the cloud. I hope that in the near future, we will be able to do that locally. For me, it's the technology of IP, which is the new thing, not only the cloud. More questions? Thinking of your business. Looking at the website of Apartamentum, it looks luxurious, and I think there's a reason why I didn't see any price. Um, I love luxury, not, but do you think that at some time this smart home can be available to a third of the population? I think so, yes. It, smart doesn't mean expensive. If, if I have a, my phone is not much more expensive then it was uh, no. Then it was five years ago, but it is much more capable. So uh, the, the smart home will be will be expensive at the beginning. Yes, and like Apple yes, computers yes, used yes, to be expensive, yes. and today this is a hundred euro. Yes, exactly. You need people event. like Lars, which push the the okay. advantage the technology forward. Great. More questions. Here you go. Yeah. Do you also collect the data on usage uh, with, the, with the technology you have installed? I mean, I worked for a company that used to collect half-hourly data for companies, but on my own house, that would be an interesting point for me to collect. I might be a bit apprehensive also of shoving it into a cloud and uh, having it open to the public to a certain degree, even if you have protection. No offense taken there. Thank you. This is a... Uh, Peter can Here's a comment. Yeah, so, so the cloud is protected. Eh? So, you have, so there is the data security and all these things are done. So it's, it's you, you have access. Closer, to hold it closer. Oh, OK. Yeah. So, OK. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. It's been very inspiring. Oh, we are too, we are, you're still working OK, so we can keep talking. As long as Lucas is fiddling around, we can keep talking. You tell me when you're done, Lucas, right? Now, okay, <laughs> so a hand to the guys who showed us how we are going to live in smart homes.